fact, if you have people like myself, if you see somebody out here, just give them a boost and tell, let them know that you're going to be okay and help them along the way. It's the, a city of love if you make it that way. In the area of aging, we are moving ahead towards an age-friendly New York. This year, NIAM issued its report toward an age-friendly New York City. The findings came from a series of community hearings and expert consultations. We are going to move from a population of under a million seniors to a population of almost one and a half million seniors. It begins to give us a road map towards an age-friendly New York City. The findings are being made public today. So what did we learn? We learned a lot. But the key findings are that older New Yorkers have a deep love for this city. They want the ability to maintain a full life in the city that they believe they helped to make great. New York is the greatest place in the world to be old. We heard this over and over again. And many people have reported living happily in their neighborhoods and even in the same apartment for 30, 40, 50 years or longer, or having come back to New York after retiring elsewhere. One older person said they kissed the ground when they got off the airplane <laughs> to be back in the city. I feel aging is no problem. How would you ask me that at my age? This year will be 29 New York City Marathons. Hopefully I can get 30. We don't have to be old. If you look good and you are happy, that's what life is all about. Another important element in promoting healthy aging is assuring a health professions workforce that's prepared to deal with the increasing number of older people in our society. We've begun our work with the field of social work with a major curriculum reform to create opportunities for social work students at the master's level to work directly with older people in the community. NIAM is committed to eliminating health disparities in our city, in our state, and in our country. We decided to work with the people of East and Central Harlem, mainly because the death rates due to influenza and respiratory diseases were at least 40% greater than the rest of New York City. We decided that the best way to decrease the death rates in these communities was to increase the rate of individuals who are vaccinated with the influenza vaccine. We did this by supplementing traditional venues such as hospital and clinics with non-traditional venues such as a community-based organization where people will have easy access to the flu vaccine without any cost. This has been very unique and it's been very useful to the community to have so many agencies come together and to work in sync with one another. I mean, NIAM has really thought this through. I really think that as time goes by, we'll see an increase in immunizations in terms of vaccinations for the flu shot. The Rockefeller drug laws were passed in 1973, and the, over the last 36 years, they've ended up incarcerating hundreds of thousands of people at a great cost to New York City and to the state. New York spent over half a billion dollars every year maintaining those laws. Meanwhile, treatment funding, education funding, were not funded to the same amount or degree. The New York Academy of Medicine and Drug Policy Alliance worked together to convene forces from the prevention, treatment, harm reduction, and public safety sectors. Uh, it was a way to get all persons concerned with drug policy in New York State to come and speak about how we might gain a public health approach to drug policy. This year, 2009, it is the year we will finally enact real reform of the Rockefeller drug laws. The partnership with NIAM allowed us to draw on a long history of research, of science, uh, and a really important base of public health officials and experts to ensure that we could not only get rid of the Rockefeller drug laws as part of an overall set of changes, but we could really begin to articulate and identify what the future of drug policy would look like here in the city and state of New York. Promoting health and preventing disease at the individual and at the community level is one of the great challenges facing America's health system. We know that in the South Bronx and in East and Central Harlem, the residents there suffer disproportionately from cardiovascular disease, diabetes, stroke, hypertension, and what we see ultimately is that now one in four young children in East and Central Harlem are overweight or obese. 
The Strategic Alliance for Health is a five-year project funded by the Centers for Disease Control. It's bringing funding to the South Bronx and East and Central Harlem to improve the health of the residents there. What we're going to be working on is tobacco cessation, improving opportunities for physical activity, and for healthy eating in these neighborhoods. The grant is unique because it's an alliance grant. The point of the grant is to bring people together to work toward policy objectives. We're looking at programs in the schools, such as Mighty Milers and Classroom Breakfasts. It's genius because you can eat and learn at the same time. When I'm eating, I feel my brain growing and stuff, getting smarter and smarter. I don't think we'll be able to accomplish a lot without NIAM's involvement. The way that New York City is set up, you need to have an advocacy voice separate from some institutions that are even involved in our own grant. NIAM can do that. The Wonders of Skin, Looking Good, Being Healthy, is a program that was developed through a partnership between the New York Academy of Medicine Office of School Health Programs and the American Skin Association. The program is designed to train teachers to educate students about skin health. The Wonders of Skin program also promotes healthy behaviors, for example, using sunscreen to prevent skin cancer. The sun is strong, it's from 10 to 4, stay in the house a little while longer. But if you're going out, wear a pair of shades and a hat, and don't forget to rub it on your head. Of course, none of this is possible without your support. Our donors, trustees, our fellows, elected and appointed officials, business, and our partners in the community. Your presence and commitment is fundamental to the success of our work. On behalf of all of our staff and our Board of Trustees, I want to thank you for your ongoing support. Together we can transform the health of people in New York City and cities everywhere.